Welcome to the Savvy Property Investors Podcast, a weekly show that delivers the best hard-hitting property industry news, business advice, and talks that will get you ascending in the real estate industry. Now, here's your host, the amazing award-winning property and business coach, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur, Miss Sapphire Gray. So welcome to the Savvy Property Investor Show, episode 10. Today's topic is out of the box, living, helping women find their way forward. Our guest today is Alina Turnley from the Soul Mamas Hub. Aline, welcome. Alina is a Sydney-based community founder, podcaster, and a hacky doll instructor, which she would explain to us. Founder of the Soul Mama Hub, Alina helps home-based mothers who feel lost, find their way back to themselves and become better uh, custodians of their own bodies and their families and also the environment. The hub provides actionable pathways to holistic health, ethical living and soulful parenting, plus a beautiful, supportive community. I'm Sophia Gray, your host. So let's get started. Alina, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Thank you, Sophia. It's really great to be here. I'm well, thank you. Yes, and I want to point out that our guest this week is all the way from Australia, so we really appreciate that. Thank you for taking (laughs) the time out with us today. My pleasure. Let's get into it. Can you define for us what is out-of-the-box living? So, look, the reason that I use that term is just because I've started a podcast called Unboxable, Unstoppable. So the reason that word came up is that I've been spent, I spent probably years uh, trying to work out what my next move would be after having my final child. I've got three. But mm-hmm. um, it wasn't very clear. It wasn't a clear path. I have a lot of different skills. I really struggled. Every time I got a job, I wanted to do three other jobs with it. I really struggled to find one title for myself. I studied several different things in several different disciplines. And I think it's one of those things that some people look at and go, oh, she's jumping all over the place. She doesn't know who she is. But actually, for me, it was I do know who I am and I have a lot of different things to offer. So I couldn't find a box big enough for all those things. And I kind of had to create my own. Yeah. So the way that I did that was by saying, let's not have a box at all. Let's just actually live really authentically from who we are and see what happens, you know, go with the flow a little bit. There's a lot of strategy involved in that, though, mind you, to make that a sustainable business idea. (laughs) Absolutely. I get that. So, you know, you've invested a lot of time into this. What made you sort of want to do this? What did you see? I mean, we just spoke about why you set up the business, but what did you see that that you could help other women? Because, yeah, we do wear multiple hats as women anyway. But you're saying, you know, unbox yourself, live your authentic life. So what does that mean to you? Why did you decide this business was the one that you was going to go for? I think why it's important and why I'm driven to do it and why it's a business Mm. is because women often get a bit lost (laughs) through their lives for various reasons. And men do too. I'm I'm not saying men don't, but I'm only going to talk about women because that's what I understand. And that's, you know. Uh, not downgrading anyone else's experience, no, but but speaking from my own experience, there's mm-hmm. definitely a theme amongst people I know where we can get very caught up in what's expected of us on a bigger sort of cultural, social level. Mm-hmm. We can get very caught up in our conditioning. Mm-hmm. We can get caught up in what we think people expect of us or we yeah. think society expects from us. And that can kind of give us a bit of a diversion or a side route away from we our own path and our own really best next steps yeah you know and it's easy not to know what they are when we've got all these layers and all these different things coming into play so I guess what I found is that I wasn't alone in that and that um Mm. I had felt very alone in that for a very long time so one of the reasons I um, build community and this is not my first community by the way Mm. (laughs) (laughs) um I built one in England called Mums in Bath which has now got 7,000 people in it yeah but um yeah so I've I've done this you know everywhere I've been but now I'm doing it as a business for the first time and that's partly because I'm starting to value who I am and what I have to offer yes and um realizing that that in order to be sustainable and ongoing with that, you need to make money. 
It has yeah, to make absolutely. money. And that's the part of like with the um, Savvy Women Group. We we work with women and we help women also to really realise the strengths that they have because we tend to to play the role of mother, wife, girlfriend, daughter, you know, but we, who are we as individuals? What do we have to offer the world as well? So it's sort of right. telling your, your truth, living your authentic life is, is something that I resonated with and why I wanted you as a guest, because it really shows and brings out that woman's like halo, you know? And I, I love that look on a woman when she knows where she's going and getting help to go in that direction. So- Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Absolutely. So what would you say is unique about living outside of this this realm, this box, as you put it? I guess what happens once you have a bit of a paradigm shift around this and realise that you don't have to live in the box anymore. <laughs> um, and that comes with, you know, it, it it's not always straightforward. Like I had to heal some things. I had to deal with some stuff, you know, some deeper stuff. Yeah. And I had to get help doing that. And um, I'm not ashamed of that at all. I'm proud of it. I see your point because we all have to heal. We've all got something within us that we feel, you know, let's heal from this. And when you've got somebody that can help you encapsulate that and find out what's going on, because we can't, uh, we put little boxes in our head and we yes. lock it away and we don't release it. And it's only when someone comes along like yourself and starts to unlock those key things within ourselves that we begin to heal. And yes. you know, I've gone on that personal healing journey. You've gone on that personal healing journey. And I think most of us need to look within ourselves to actually say, all right, how can we best heal ourselves? How can we what can we get to, to help yeah. us heal ourselves? But going through the experience ourselves, where it enables us to even better help to heal somebody else because we can ensure our experiences. And I think that's what you're speaking on, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think the thing that's unique about it from my perspective is just that we need to learn how to get out of our own way. Often there's right. nothing stopping us except ourselves. And so I guess that's where I always begin with my yeah. work with other women, because that's the bit that needs unlocking or unboxing, if you like. It's just us. It's actually so much of our limitations and our obstacles are self-created. So a lot of what I'm doing is actually just shining a light on those very gently very carefully in your own time. Let's get out of our own way. You know, yeah. let's take a big step in a bold direction. And it's not like I don't think that focusing on courage and bravery, and even though that I I do think those things are important, very important. I do martial arts, but yeah. I actually don't think that's the focus. I actually think the focus is more quiet and internal, and it's a small tweak. Sometimes it can take moments to yeah. heal a hurt that has been sitting there like a shackle on you for twenty years. Absolutely. And, you know, how has your model been received by your community? How, Look, you it's know, pretty early days. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty early days, but so far so good. I've had a really great response. The, the blog itself, so I've been writing a blog since, well, the group started in 2007. The blog started in 2009. So that's, I'm allowed to call it a pioneering blog because of that, because okay. it's pretty old. Yeah. Um, but um, I started writing because I was a single parent. I was um, kind of alone, studying, working, very ambitious, but lost. Yeah. And I felt yeah. very alone. So I started writing to kind of connect and to share, I guess, the awakenings I was having along the way. And that was really cool because it just gave me a connection and it gave me an outlet and I started to practice the art of writing and I taught myself a lot of technology as well. Yeah. So that led me to here. And then I guess what's been happening, which is really interesting, is I've, I've realised I'm definitely not alone and there's a lot of women who need this much yeah. more than even they realise until they sort of go, oh, there's a thing for this, you know. Yeah, and so it's, it's been really well received. Yeah, really good. It's really exciting. Excellent. And that's the thing as well, when, when you're working alongside women and building out a community, you've written on it, you've spoken on it, you've gone through it. It's so the experiences, and I'm not saying every business or or concept that we decide to do as a business is a personal mission, is something that we've gone through. But in this instance, it is something that you've gone through. It is something that women do go through. And to have a community, to have a business that's set around helping and allowing people to heal through this process, I think it's an excellent idea. And it really does come to mind with helping 
not only women to be better versions of themselves, but helping them to understand how to become better versions of themselves and don't label everything that we see around us. Because we tend to have all these little tags that we put on ourselves and we think, well, I'm labeling myself, just be you. And I think that's why that's what your your concept has enlightened me on. It's just being mm -hmm. your authentic self. So yeah, and it's you know it's it's a simple idea, but it's and it's almost cliched, but actually doing it is you know it requires a little bit of a little bit of complexity. Yeah. So what are some of the challenges that um, you face when running this this business as well? Look again, like I like I'm saying, I guess um, with my members, yeah, it's often internal. So my challenges I found have kind of disappeared every time I've worked out that they're sort of uh, become every time I become aware of them. Yeah, if you like yeah. So for example, um, I've been doing a part time job to fund my business for some mm -hmm. time as a high school teacher, and. Yeah. Um, I recently realized how much of my bandwidth that was taking up and that actually it was a way that I was kind of keeping myself small in a way. Like I was using that to only work part time on my business. I was saying, well, I've got to keep doing this because I studied it and it's funding my business and blah, blah, blah. And I guess what was really interesting about that is that when I did actually talk to my husband, I have a very supportive partner, which is a massive, a massive thing. I haven't always had that. So it's, Excellent. massive thing and um he just said you know like it it might seem like a lot of money but honestly if your business is successful you'll make a lot more anyway yes. so let's yes. just fund it you know let's just borrow a little bit of money and fund it it, it won't be that hard you're only working part-time anyway you know yeah. and then it'll take the stress off the kids and it'll take yeah. the stress off you and allow you to focus and it's amazing just even making that decision mm. and i feel like this is a key thing actually is just making a decision and saying, well, okay, I've decided and now I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. You know, I'll do, are you willing? If you have decision and willing together, you make Absolutely. a decision and then you're willing. That is so powerful. I mean, that's a game changer. And then even if you do have a problem, you find a way, you know. So that's, I think, probably the key, the key obstacle that I'm now getting through. But there's others too, like imposter syndrome, you know, yeah. comes and goes. And by that, I mean, every now and again, I think, who am I? Like, who am I to be doing this work? You know, and it, what, who would want to hear my stuff? I'm not even qualified. I am, by the way, but yeah. I'm not even qualified. You know, and yeah. you go through this in your mind all the time. And that's the thing: fear, imposter syndrome, lack of confidence, feeling overwhelmed. These are so many words that band around that I hear on a continuous basis. And I always say the transition from employment to self-employment. It's not that far apart, but you have to be committed to it. You have to say, you know what? I know that what I'm going to deliver as a business is going to help so many people. I know that whatever I'm going to do in my business is not going to only help other people. It could help my, my family. It could ha have a better impact on our life. Because, yes, what running a business is, is more than a nine to five because you love what you do. So you put the energies behind it. But making that commitment to yourself and your business is is key in order for us to grow as as individuals as well. It allows us to grow and focus. But when you're dueling and saying, all right, then I still have to get money coming in. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to then say, make a decision. All right. If my business is making money, why can't I just give it a go? Why can't I just say, look, let me put all my energy into this work out on this business and if it works it works and if it doesn't hey ho many of people have failed and tried and come back again brush themselves off and be successful at that and that's what i love about when people just said you know what i'm i need to give in to my community i've been there and i've done that myself and sometimes it's heart-wrenching and you feel fearful thinking oh you know am i doing the right thing who am i as you just said about am i the expert uh, imposter syndrome and all these mm. things hey you're not you're you are who you are and and that's what i really love about when women recognize who they really are and that they can that's their their given right to go out there and serve people that's their given right to teach what they know to help other people and if you only help a few people hey ho but 
it's at least you've taken that risk, at least you've taken away that fear and you're giving all of, of what you are into your community. So that's a brilliant stance. Mm, well, I agree. And there's yeah. a lot in that too. There's so many things I could respond to there. I don't know how much okay. time I've got. <laughs> so one thing I will say is that imposter syndrome and feeling like you're not good enough is actually a sign of achieve high achievers. Yes. So generally, if you're asking that question, it's because you're pursuing excellence. Yes. And that will only do you well. Absolutely. And everybody who's ever succeeded has had to fail in order to do so. Like it's, mm. it's not just, you know, an important step. It's the only step on the path to success, actually, is to That's fail right. many times over. And I think what sets an entrepreneur apart, a successful entrepreneur apart, is that they become more comfortable with uncertainty. They become more comfortable with existing in that space of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I know, I mean, I thrive on it in a way. Yeah. My life has become quite stable with my husband and my three children. Nice. So this gives me the uncertainty I need, the excitement mm -hmm. that I need, really. It sounds a bit sad, doesn't it? Like the housewife who <laughs> needs some excitement. But you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. I don't get to go out dancing anymore, like going out clubbing. So so the way that I kind of get my rocks off is by sitting at home, staying up to one o'clock, writing a sales page. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us that are entrepreneurs, do enjoy what we do and I think that yeah. is the, the whole essence behind it I mean I can't agree with you not going out to my clubbing still because I still love going out and enjoying I'm life. working on it babe I'm yeah. working on it it's at the love, moment yeah I absolutely love working on the business because I know then when I'm working on the business I'm serving my clients and Right. That gives me so much joy to see their progress, to see how they grow as well. And I think that's what most entrepreneurs do, even if you're running a service, a product, whatever you're doing, it's being able to serve that the, your end user, being able to give them what they need. Because obviously when you found something to do and then someone wants to, to use that service or buy that product, you just feel elated that, you know, I've created this, I've done this. So you want to work on it more and achieve more because of that. And it doesn't become a bugbear. It becomes a joy. As you said, I love it myself. I love working. I love creating things and I love delivering as well. So, yeah, that's brilliant. Well, join us after the break with more insights from Alina. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life. Okay, welcome back. And we're, we have had a brilliant first half. Let's carry on with these questions. I'm really getting a lot of insights from you, Alina. Could you tell us why do you primarily work with women? It's a good question. You know what? It's a really funny one. And I think it's, I have actually done plenty of work with men. I train with men in my martial art predominantly. Um, but I've ended up being a Hapkido instructor to women. Mm. And I've ended up making communities that are mostly only women, not always. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I've had plenty of clients and plenty, a lot of friends who are male, and I guess I, I just resonate with the way that groups of women work together. I love yeah. collaborating with women and I feel like there's a huge amount of power in mm. the way that we come together and we have, you know, it's all of this sort of Shiva Shakti stuff that I don't fully understand, but like we are creators, you know, like we're born to be creators and that for me is powerful. It resonates a lot and becoming a mother was very much a sort of, um, rite of passage for me literally like I really went through crazy times to be a mother and to then be a mother again and then be a mother again I've had loads of stories I could tell around that and I guess that got me talking to women because I was talking about specifically things that happened to women around yes. pregnancy and around relationships and all that sort of thing and so it just kind of kept going from there and I guess that's just kind of the way it evolved. It was never like I went, I'm only going to work with men. I don't yeah. like working with men. Yeah. That never happened. But um, I do think there's great power in when women come together. And I think we need it more. I just, <laughs> that's controversial. But yeah. but um, men have lots of ways of coming together. 
Yes. And I know that they don't always work for every man. I know like my husband can get isolated with work and family and things like that. But mm -hmm. I just feel like that our society is kind of well set up for men coming together, but not so set up for mothers and women coming together. So mm -hmm. I guess I like to work in the voids. I like to work in the spaces where things are needed. And I feel like it's needed more there because I was pretty isolated when I was a, a mother the first time around. And I think also we are creators of life. When we become mothers, we've created a life. And when you look on that and on a broader sense, there is a lot of women out there that have been creators of life. I'm a mother of four myself and a grandmother of seven. So for me, I've not even just stopped with my my four. I've continued to have now my kids have continued for me on my behalf to have more. So when you're looking mm -hmm. at that, you're you're basing all everything that we do on generations to come as well. Because when you have children, they may have children. And then mm. it continues, our legacy continues. And it's always understanding what's the basis of our legacy. And when you're, uh, when you're a mother and a woman, that's the basis of the legacy is to pass that on to our kids and to our kids then to pass it on to our grandkids and so forth and such like. And that's mm. why I, I work with women because I, they are the creators. They are the vessels of life. Yes. And when you have a vessel of life in any, any, um, perception of 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 living the woman is the catalyst of the home the man is the head of the home but the woman is the catalyst of building at that home to deliver young people and i just think that's a beautiful thing when you can help these women to realize you're not just a mother mm. as well and it's you're, and it's, a, you're a future changer that's right you know mm. and you're you're contributing to society in that way so why not help women i i work uh, with women myself 95% mm. of my clients are women. And I yeah. always see the development in themselves when they realize you're not just a, a woman, you're not just a mother, you are. You can be you and be out there and show the world there's so much things that you can offer, you know, and it, when they start to get that aha moment, it's phenomenal. When they start to realize how much they can do, that's when the breakthroughs happen. That's when all the changes happen. And that's when they start to really look into themselves and think, I really get this. Mm. I've noticed so, that as well with the yeah. members in my group. Yeah, it's amazing. So what changes have you recognized with the members in your group as well? Like, and like you know, I say, fairly early days. I mean, I've had some impact in the past with my blog mm -hmm. and um, now the podcast as well. And I've certainly had some impact with teaching women martial arts. That's been very impactful. Um, I guess the biggest impact I've noticed with my membership, which although it's quite new, I, I've really noticed some things moving, like momentum, just gradual mm. building of momentum. Mm. Um, they're quite small things, but they're small things with a big effect. So like one woman, for example, she's a shift worker, she's a nurse, and she just wasn't feeling very, I guess, inspired and fulfilled. Yeah. in her work even though she does amazing work actually mm -hmm. but she was feeling like she couldn't make any changes because she didn't want to disrupt her family's rhythms mm. and i think i've just helped her a little bit come to the realization that actually she is her family's rhythms like she has to put herself first you know there's mm. been that sort of a little bit of a reckoning with a few of the women actually where they've been kind of floundering and getting really caught up in yeah. other people's stuff so I guess what the main effect that I'm having at the moment, and like I say, it's pretty foundational because they're still quite new to it, but is that they are coming back to their centre. Like they, instead of being sort of so scatty and having their mind in a thousand places at once and not knowing how to prioritise their own stuff that's important to them and not being sure even what's important yeah. to them, I've helped them to really clarify, okay, this is what's important to me yes. and this is what I must spend time on every day. Otherwise, I don't feel good. I don't that's feel like me. You know, yeah. so that that's the sort of first shift. And then yeah. what will happen from there, and I've seen this a little bit with people I've coached privately, is things will open up. Mm. Things open up to them. So this thing that had them stuck in their business or this thing that had them stuck with their kids' behaviour or something in the home that they couldn't quite just get working properly, you know, some sort of, like I talk about ethical living quite a lot as well, which is the way we care for our environment. And there's things like that, like, oh, I want to do this, but it just seems too hard. And I'm like, oh, it's easy, just do this. You know, yeah. and that could be like 
making your own fabric softener, it could be making kombucha, or it could be buying groceries in a slightly different way that's just a little bit kinder to the planet or shopping in slightly different way online that's a little bit kinder to the planet, things like that. So mm -hmm. just practical slash spiritual esoteric, where they two meet, you know, that's kind of where I work. And what I see over time is that things just open up. They just go, oh, it's that sort of paradigm shift that way more is possible than I realised without that much effort. True. So what are some of the ways that women out there can implement the way you're talking about the out of the box um, thinking in their daily lives? I think the very first, the very first thing is to just accept is to go, you yeah. know, something doesn't feel right. Like that's the number one. Yeah. And then on a daily basis, I would say, if you can do anything at all, just to come back to yourself, it might be as simple as a breath here and there. It might be as simple as drinking enough water. You know, we start there. So, like, start with the basics. If you're all over the basics, then mm. I would say start looking at just work outwards from there. There's kind of like a circle around that. First, there's you and your basics. Are you hungry, tired, lonely, angry? You know, go through the basics. If you got those, if you're sleeping well and you're well nourished mm. and you feel fairly grounded, then I would say look at the next thing, which is your relationships. So how are your relationships? Do you do you need to make good with somebody? Is there something you do every day that feels like a disconnect with your children, with your partner, with your mm. friends? Is there something where when you say it, it doesn't feel right or it feels critical yeah. or it feels out of integrity? Look at that. Take responsibility for it. Say to your partner or your children or yeah. your friends, when I say this thing, I don't feel right. Thank you for letting me work this out with you. You don't always have to apologise. Sometimes you can just say, thank you, I just needed to work that out. Yeah. And then be vigilant about it. Every day when you notice it, take a step away from it, change your thinking, take a few more steps in that direction. And then as it grows from there, I would say it comes into the, the sort of space of what's the effect you're having on the world? So yeah. how, are you living ethically? Are you buying things that are kinder to the planet? Now, look, I'm not a vegan, plastic, zero free. I'm not that. I can't be yeah. that. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I don't do anything. So... I do think we can get caught up in all or nothing with that. So the yeah. next step out from there is what small things can you change? And over time, like I've gone from being, you know, someone who had a reusable plastic cup and stopped taking plastic bags, you know, that was the extent of it. Mm -hmm. And then it grew. Then I, you know, grew a few of my own veggies and started making kombucha, you know. And then it grew. Now I buy organic and I try to only buy regeneratively farmed meat because I'm a meat eater. So if you, if you eat meat, find out where it comes from, find out who does it properly and looks after the planet when they do it, buy it there, you know. So start prioritising the bigger things that align with your values. Sure. So, you know, find that alignment and you can do it every day. Like it might be that one thing a day. Okay, I bookmarked an ethical butcher. You know, that might be your thing for today. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you keep doing it and you keep doing it and then, oh, my gosh, it grows, you know. Yeah. And it does. So that's the sort of thing. Yeah, it always starts with something, doing something small, and then once mm. you've done that and achieved that, then you can move on. And then it, the time you look back and you think, "Oh, I'm doing more rather than less," only because yeah. you've just organically done it. Because I, I mean, I'm a recyclist queen. I, I recycle everything. I make sure that is, you know. Um, but I'm also a meat eater. But I do yeah. switch out my food according to to weeks as well so some weeks i'll just yeah. you know be plant-based and some weeks right. i'll just have you know fish or chicken or something so i do switch right. it up according to how i want to eat i do only eat locally produ uh, produced food as well right. and i love growing vegetables and things like that and i had the opportunity to do that when i lived abroad so i i understand about how you can live in in your own zone in your own way and be ethical as well. So thanks for sharing that. So yeah, just start where you are. Start right yeah. where you are. That's it. Absolutely. So what is your number one advice that you could give to anyone on our listeners today? I guess the number one thing and the foundation of all of this stuff we're talking about really is to be able to tune into your instincts and kind of follow the breadcrumbs through your own life, you know. Mm -hmm. If you are one of those people that struggles a little bit to trust your own thinking and Mm. you can't get out of your own way you know you you're not quite sure you've lost that sense of certainty well that's okay you know embrace that there's great power in that and if you can start to just turn up the volume a little bit with your intuition turn up the volume a little bit with your instincts start to listen to those little 
spidey senses and the little tingly antenna that you have that we all have and start to tune in. That's yeah. kind of, for me, That's it sounds very 1970s. It's not supposed to. But it's like just come back to yourself and, and get used to your centre and really carry it with you wherever you go, you know, you're going. And that's probably the, the number one thing that I think we easily forget. I think from there, amazing True. things can come. Excellent. So, Alina, how can our listeners contact you and learn more about your services and offers that you have? Well, thank you for asking. So they're probably the, the one-stop shop would be the website, which is soulmamahub.com, S-O-U-L-M-A-M-A-H-U-B. And I'm on Instagram also as at soulmamahub. And then there's the podcast Unboxable. Just search Unboxable, Unstoppable, and you'll find it anywhere. Brilliant. Thank you so much for being our guest today. It's been such a pleasure learning more about your business and learning more about you. You've been fantastic in sharing with our audience. So come on, Savvy Investors, let's take flight. Don't forget to subscribe, rate us, review, download and share. We look forward to sharing our never podcast with you next week on the Savvy Property Investors Show. Look forward to seeing you then. Enjoy this episode. And thank you again, Nalina, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Sapphire. Bye-bye. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors Podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life.